Many gardeners choose to start their own seeds for vegetable crops at home rather than purchasing transplants from the store. And there's a number of benefits to this, the main one being a savings in cost, but also we have access to a greater diversity of vegetable seeds. For example, today I'm planting a heritage variety of pepper, and this is a variety that was grown by the Native Americans. I brought these seeds back with us from our trip to Tucson last year. Certainly I wouldn't find transplants of this variety at my local garden center. Another advantage is that we can time the sowing of our seeds so that the plants are ready to transplant in the garden when it's appropriate for our own situation right here in Stillwater. Uh, rather than having plants that have been produced on a larger scale for many different people. So to get started, we need a container in which we'll grow our vegetable seedlings. And you can use something that you purchase from a garden center or a plant supply store, such as a tray or a peat pot. You can also use a variety of household items. Um, I have an egg carton here and a plastic tray from the grocery store that came with the chicken in it originally. Now there's a couple of things we want to consider. When you're using plastic, we want drainage. So go ahead and poke a few holes in the bottom of that container. You also want to think about how deep that is. We want about two to three inches of soil depth to grow our seedlings in. Now the egg cartons work well, but they're a little bit shallow. And that's okay, but we're gonna have to watch the moisture level in this media very well. And we'll probably have to transplant these out a little bit sooner than if the soil was deeper. Now let's take a look at our growing medium. There's a few things we wanna look for. We want good drainage. We also want high water holding capacity. And that might sound a little bit contradictory, um, but the, the drainage keeps those seeds from being too wet where they're going to rot. Um, and the water holding capacity makes sure that there's plenty of moisture available to the seeds to germinate. Now most commercial mixes will have um, a variety of contents that include some mixture of sphagnum peat moss, sand or expanded shale, and then either perlite or vermiculite. And those have high water holding capacity, but they also help aerate the soil. And it's important that plenty of oxygen can reach our seed and those uh, roots that are developing to help the seedlings grow. So to get started, we want to fill our trays with some damp, media. Go ahead and get it damp beforehand, not so wet that it's dripping, but you can see here that this is a, a nice moist media compared to the dry stuff. It holds together a little bit better. It can be hard to wet this thoroughly properly once the seeds are in there and also you would risk washing those seeds too deep. So it's good to start a little bit damp. Uh, when we use seed trays here in our greenhouse, we like to start with uh, little rows and this makes it easier to manage our seedlings as they grow. And we just simply squeeze that damp potting media up into little rows. Now to seed in here, I'm gonna use, this is just a, a label for the plants. You can use a pencil or a knife and just create little ridges in here. This is where I'm gonna drop our seeds. Okay. Open your seed packet, and uh, we want to space our seeds about an inch to two inches apart. They're not going to be in here for very long, and for small seeds, it can be a little bit challenging to get them at a good spacing. Uh, these are a little bit larger, easier to handle. Um, I don't want to lose too many of these. I don't have a lot of seeds, so I want to make sure that I'm not overseeding where I have to thin them out later. Once you've finished filling the rows, we're going to cover those with a very thin layer of soil. So basically, I'm just pinching these rows back together again to cover the seeds. The seedlings are going to germinate rather quickly, and most seedlings germinate well between temperatures of 70 and 80 degrees. Now that might be a little warmer than most of us keep our houses, so you could provide supplemental warmth to those seedlings by putting a small heating pad underneath your seed container. Another thing to remember is that we are going to be adding moisture to these periodically. So 
depending on where you set your seed tray, you're going to want to put something under it to catch the water. Now, keeping our seeds adequately moist can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, there's a few ways that we can handle this. Remember, we start with a damp medium. What we want is to maintain that potting medium at a constantly moist but not wet state and around 100% relative humidity. So the way that we do that is by covering our seed trays. And that was one reason that I really like these trays, uh, the plastic trays, because they come with a lid that we could put over it once we've sown our seeds. For larger trays like this one, uh, plastic wrap works very well. You want to wrap it around tightly and that'll help keep the moisture in. Might need a couple of pieces to work down the length of the tray. Now, once those seeds germinate, we're going to remove this plastic. Uh, we don't want to leave it on as those seedlings are coming up. Something else to think about is keeping that moisture in there. So every few days, you can lift up the plastic or your lid and just lightly spray. Uh, well, first feel it to make sure that it's not still damp. And if it's starting to dry out, just lightly spray it uh, with a mister and that'll add some moisture back into the potting medium. Now, a lot of fertilizer um, labels recommend that we fertilize every week, but we don't need to do that. Uh, every two to three weeks is gonna be adequate for seedlings, and we don't need to make our first application until we're ready to transplant these seedlings into a larger container. Starting our seeds indoors is very simple, and it's a great way to spend a cold winter day. Our seedlings will be ready to transplant out into the garden in about six to 10 weeks, depending on the variety that we're growing.